And let me tell you what practice does. Practice gives you that confidence again, that boldness again. If you, if you practice a phone script or a, or a presentation script or, or any type of script over and over with somebody until it is just second nature, you literally are bulletproof. They smell it on you. You will get the meeting. And somebody else may have to say the same words and they won't get the meeting. They won't make the sale. They're saying the same words, but you've practiced and you say the same words, you sell it. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. I always love doing that when I hear Jill on the phone next door. <laughs> it's always fun. The people that talk to her have to wonder, like, what? It, or do you work out of, like, a kennel? Uh, I think we, like, kennel? work out of some, like, <laughs> out in the country. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Guys, this is episode 95. We're getting close to the centennial. Is yeah. That the 100 mark. Uh, episode. Okay. We're getting close to the Ben Franklin. We are getting close to the Benjamin. <laughs> episode 95. And uh, in this episode, um, it's going to be a short one. Uh, but man, it's an important one. Uh, we wanted to talk to you about practice. Have you ever, have you ever heard that Alan Iverson? He was like, you talking about practice? When like there, yeah, he was like, getting all practice? that flack about like how he just like wasn't committed to practice, but like he was killing it like in the games. Yeah, yeah. And it was like this press conference and it's like this famous like meme and like just highlight video where they like asked him all these questions about his like off the court like Regiment conduct. Or whatever. Yeah. And he was like, are we talking about practice? Like we're sitting here in this in this post game, we're talking about practice. <laughs> but we are talking about practice. We're talking about practice. We're talking about practice. Um, I think with our with our organization, uh, we have probably one of the greatest cultures of uh, practice right. uh, from the top down. Uh, so maybe let's just start there. Yeah, I I, uh, I think one of the things that people do is they put very minimal effort into practice and if we're talking about business or we're talking about sales, what they do is they end up practicing on their customer. Hmm. Like, mm -hmm. that's literally like handing someone else your wallet and telling them to be in charge of it. Yeah. It's one of the more foolish things I've ever seen. And, and it's funny how salespeople or anybody expects to be good at anything and not practice, but mm -hmm. practice in the game situation. Mm -hmm. Like I promise you, if you take Michael Jordan, which that's more my error, um, mm -hmm. if you take Michael Jordan, and he's shooting a free throw or he's doing a layup in the game, I promise you that's not the first time. Hmm. Now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He could do it in his sleep. Mm -hmm. He could do that in his sleep because he did it so many thousands of times practicing. And, and I don't know how we get into the business world or we get into sales and we think, oh, I'm, I'm just going to get good over time or I'm somehow going to fumble my way into good mm -hmm. instead of doing intentional practice. And one of the things that's lost in, in sales today is role playing. Yep. People just don't do exactly. enough. Um, and they, they don't put enough value on it. Uh, but, uh, but that's something that we do constantly. It puts you in an uncomfortable situation. And, and if you role play something 100, 200, 300 times, when you're actually in the scenario, it goes so smooth. It goes so smooth because, because you're saying something that's already come out of your mouth a thousand times, mm -hmm. you know? I remember one of our uh, boot camps, well, at all of our boot camps, role play plays, and what, by boot camp, I mean uh, our, our training boot camps that we do with our new agents that have come on board. Once they hit a certain stage in their business, they come to boot camp. And um, a lot of times I'll do an Instagram story, and I'm like, on Saturdays, we role play. And mm -hmm. I remember one time, Jason Ciano uh, from uh, up in New York, he, uh, he sent me a DM on Instagram. He's like, he's like, bro, are you really uh, role playing right now at 8 a.m. on a Saturday? I was like, absolutely. He's like, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's over and over and over. And we teach our leaders um, as leaders when uh, when someone on their team calls them, they're saying like, hey, I, you know, I, my conversion today was just terrible, or something was going on, this or this happened. You know, for their response to be, all right, great, let's role play. Or like, hey, I, I was having this issue on the phone today. Their response should be like, ring, 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 hello. And, and it's instantly like, okay, well, let's role play through it. Right. Because you can sit there and you can talk to someone, and I think this is a good point to make uh, for those of you that are in leadership roles uh, within the sales um, industry. 
it's one thing to talk about what's happening. Yep. Like, tell me about what's going on. Oh, well, I'm doing this, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing that. Man, well, that, I mean, it sounds like you're doing all the right things versus, all right, cool, let's role play. So, hey, I'm, I'm Tyler. Hey, I'm Joe. And then you go through this back and forth, and you're like, that thing that you just told me you're doing, you're not doing. You're or not that doing thing it. you're telling me that you're not doing, you're doing it every you're single doing time. It every time. Uh, and because people here's don't what realize. Happens. Here's what happens. You don't fall to the level of the knowledge that you have. Like, mm-hmm. like I have a lot of sales knowledge, but I don't fall to that level in a game situation. I fall to my level of practice. Yeah. Every single time. When the pressure's on, you fall to the level of practice. Um, you know, it's funny, I was thinking about how uh, Tom Shea's meeting with Ricky in yeah. there. And Tom Shea is one of our favorite people. He's a friend of our organization. If you haven't read his book, Unbreakable, get it. Um, what was he, 23-year Navy SEAL, and um, just an incredible individual. But I promise you, if I got up, walked out of here, pulled him in right here in front of the camera, and I said, hey, Tom, you're snipers. When you were training snipers, <laughs> you got them to practice in battle, right? He would probably punch me in my mouth because they had to pull the trigger thousands of times. You know what he told me one time? The best sniper that he's ever seen on this planet, the number one sniper on this planet, he shot 4,000 rounds every day. 4,000 every day. And, hmm. and how, can we, how can we look at the greats in any industry and see that and then think that we're gonna be different. We're really gonna grab the world by the tail and pull it down and <laughs> shove it in our pockets and never practice. It's Man. crazy. It's it's insanity, really. It is. I mean, practice and, and just preparation as a whole, especially you can do it a thousand times, but coming up over the holidays, we got Christmas coming up, we got New Year's coming up. There's gonna be some time that you're gonna have off. Um, when you go back into the field, when you go back into your sales environment, it is going to require practice. Yep. Um, there is no small or large amount of time that you can take off where it's you know, justifiable like, oh, well, I was only off two days. That means I'm good to go versus four days. Well, that means I need to go practice. Um, you're always going to be rusty. All of our um, best people, they will say the scripts that we have. Mm-hmm. They will say them over and over out loud oh, video yeah. recording themselves and listen to it on the way to appointments. Oh, yeah. Every time. All the great ones. All of them do it. Yeah. And they're the most consistent, best producers. They knock it out of the park every time. And there's nothing special about them. It's just they make special decisions when it comes to practice. Mm-hmm. So what is it? People say practice makes perfect, and it's practice makes permanent. Is that practice uh, makes what permanent? I heard? And what's practice the, doesn't uh, make perfect. What's the quote that Nathan always says? Um, I think it's a. Um, the will to win is good, but the will to prepare to win is better. Is that John Wooden, or that's? Uh, that's Nathan Wells. Um, We've stolen it now. Who's the other coach? The football coach that said that. Nathan Wells. Well, Nathan Wells. <laughs> Nathaniel Wells. Nathaniel. Uh, he uh, said that. But that's it, guys. Lombardi. Just, is that who you were looking for? Yeah, yeah. That's exactly yeah I pulled that out of my Caitlin brain just now. <laughs> general, <laughs> she said general it. General Lombardi. <laughs> general. <laughs> general. <laughs> <laughs> what are those? What are those? Uh, who was so, the guy that said, "Gentlemen, this is a football"? Was that him? Was that was Lombardi him. also? I think it was him as well. But that's how he started every season. And what does that mean? Yeah. They went back to the basics, basics the basics. And, and what did they do? I think John Wooden would talk about how to put their socks on correctly so that yeah. they wouldn't get blisters, how to tie their shoes correctly. Yep. There's a lot of coaches that talk a lot about practice. Pra- <laughs> I wonder why. I wonder why. And you know how why we know their name? It's because they led what? By example. No, winning teams. Oh, <laughs> and by example. <laughs> and by example. <laughs> winning team. That's why we know their names. Uh, yeah. That's why you can pull Lombardi out of a hat and throw him into any group, and everybody would go, yep, that dude's a winner. Why is he a winner? He coached winners, and they practiced. Yeah, the other thing, and, and then we'll, we'll wrap this up. I was just thinking um, the great like MVP, the great athletes that, that you can think of, I would – Beg to say that their off-season preparation, their off-season practice, their off-season training was equal to and probably greater than during the season. 100%. Which if you think about that from a sales perspective, that it's more important to practice when you're not in that environment than when you are. Uh, We go so far as to say within our agency that if you get three no's on the phone, like hang up the phone and call us Don't waste another phone call. Like, don't waste another live person. Don't waste another uh, check, another commission check. Yeah. um, Because something's going wrong. 
and, and, and obviously we need to diagnose that and figure out what it is and correct it. Um, and it's just practice, 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 and it makes it unconscious. Um, so much of sales is those soft skills, the eye contact, the pauses, the, the passion points throughout a script. And you cannot focus on those small but, but game-changing nuances unless the actual verbiage becomes unconscious, which can only happen uh, through practice. Like when, when you can just open your mouth and all the words that you know are supposed to come out are going to come out, then you can actually focus on like panning the room, focusing on one person at a time, pausing in certain points to emphasize uh, certain passion in different areas. Uh, and that's when really like it takes it to the to the next level. But I think somebody said, told me one time, I, I heard a guy speak, and I'm trying to remember the numbers, but he said for a 30-minute presentation, he was an orator, oh, you told me that one time. for a 30-minute presentation, um, he needed to prepare and practice, I think it was an hour for every minute or an hour for every five minutes, something like that. I think you told me like an hour was, for every minute. It was yeah. before I was supposed to give an hour speech, and I, you were telling me in a way of, <laughs> you were like, you know, they say you're supposed to do an hour per minute. I was like, that's 60. Uh, I got to go. <laughs> I, I'll see you later. <laughs> I got to go practice. <laughs> but we just wanted to, to, to talk about that. Everybody needs a reminder on that because sometimes you get stalemated yeah. in, in work and you're like, God, what is going on? And everybody's saying no. Nobody's getting on the phone. I can't get past this gatekeeper. And it's, it's, a, uh, it's, it's just a downward spiral. And let me tell you what practice does. Practice gives you that confidence again, that boldness again. If you, if you practice a phone script or a, or a presentation script or, or any type of script over and over with somebody until it is just second nature, you literally are bulletproof. They smell it on you. You will get the meeting. And somebody else may have to say the same words and they won't get the meeting. They won't make the sale. They're saying the same words, but you've practiced and you say the same words, you sell it. So it's a... Uh, um, I mean, think about basketball, right? So Michael Jordan, among hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other players, they all play with the same ball, mm -hmm. right? It was the same ball, yep. same script, same moves that people could do, mm -hmm. but he outworked them. Mm -hmm. He outworked them. Yeah. You take Larry Bird, for example, because this is a really good example. If you go old school Celtics with Larry Bird, he had, for how great he played, he had the least amount of talent mm -hmm. compared to a lot of his, a lot of his contemporaries of that day yeah. who had more talent, but he crushed them. And it was because of his work ethic. It was because of his practice. And I remember my dad teaching me that mm -hmm. when uh, when I was little. He mm -hmm. had me watch the Celtics with him. He loved the Celtics. But Larry Bird was a worker, a worker. That's awesome. So that's but but everybody has the same tools there, right? Everybody has the same tools. And uh, and so anyway, beat on your craft daily. Practice daily. Don't let a day go by. Don't go into a meeting without having said those words over and over and over. Record it. Video it. Listen to yourself. I used to make my dog sit and listen to me give presentations. This is a true story. You can ask Kim. I made Kim sit there. I've made my kids sit there. I have done presentations to everybody in my family and to no one and by myself. So it's a, it's a fact. Take it. Roll it up in your little something and smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I pipe. heard Gary V say the other day on, on an episode of Daily V, he said, there is a thin, thin, thin line between confidence and insecurity. Yeah. And practice is what determines. That's like, a thread practice, in that line. Like, practice is what determines which way you go. Um, and in this environment, in a sales environment, which is what we're all here to do, um, man, that confidence versus insecurity when it comes to closing that deal, they yeah. can smell it from a mile, yeah. a mile away. Um, so guys, practice, we're going into the holidays. Make sure that you take time with your family, relax, refresh, all of that good stuff before the first of the year, but make sure that you do <laughs> fit in some time to practice. And before you hit the ground running, when you get back from the holidays, make sure that you have spent adequate time getting back to your basics, back to your scripts, uh, so that you don't waste any time in the first part of the year. That's it. All, All right, right, guys, that's episode 95 of the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. We are the Sales Wolves. Ow.